Hello. Reverend Emily Denmark McGee here, pastor of Ocean View United Methodist Church, and coming to you on a Friday afternoon. This is what I look like on Friday. Got my uh, keens on with socks, <laughs> and I'm in my overalls, my t-shirt, and I wear this hat to keep the sun off my face. Coming to you in a special announcement because a lot is going on. And um, my colleagues who are older and wiser than me have already reached out to their congregations and um, uh, I was busy digging holes and, and, and burying uh, signs at the church this morning. And uh, what, um, I need to talk about the CDC and the guidelines and uh, what it means to come together. So, uh, yeah, whoa, uh, CDC came out with new guidelines that we couldn't have predicted when <laughs> that was going to happen. It happened on a, a Thursday, and now Friday morning the conference gives us new guidelines, and so it's, 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 it's here we go, right? Yeah, it's one of those things. Um, I know you're at home and you're and you're and you're looking at this news and saying, "Oh, great! When I go to church on Sunday, I won't have to wear my mask because I've been vaccinated." Or, "Oh, great! <laughs> I won't have to wear a mask because nobody knows if I've been vaccinated or not. I won't have to wear a mask." Um, so I don't I don't know if you know this, but we have a task force put in place to make plans for whatever's happening. And um, when we decided to go back to a an in-person worship service, which we started on uh, September 20th of last year, never never ended it. We never put the genie back in the bottle. We continued to worship together. We didn't have an outbreak, so we were lucky. Uh, we had the task force, but we, but we decided that when the county went to phase two, we would have an in-person worship service again inside. And we, But we said when they made the decision, if it was like on a Friday <laughs> or late in the week, we would give ourselves another week to implement everything that we need to come together and, and have a worship service. Now, I know that not requiring masks and figuring out how we identify who's vaccinated and who's not is not as much work as isolating everybody and then distancing everybody in the worship service. I realized that uh, even though that was done in March or April, uh, it, it may not seem like a lot of work and to you, at home who are not in charge of whoever comes together to, to a worship service may think, you know, what's the big deal? Just let everybody not wear their mask now. We don't like wearing them. I don't like wearing the mask. That's why I do a lot of uh, meetings and, and Bible studies by Zoom because it's, <laughs> it's better. You can see my whole face. So the only thing is that it's not all thought out yet. It's, it's not all planned out yet. And I guarantee you there's some of you sitting at home right now who are going, hmm, I think I'm going to go to church because too many people are, are going to be Russian made and they told you they don't have to be separated anymore. You don't have to be, you know, and they, they may just stay home. And that's okay because we always have home worship. And the other thing is that our task force hasn't been able to meet. Uh, two of them are out of town for the weekend and one of them's in the hospital right now. <laughs> you know, we have like the other one's married to the one in the hospital, so we really have one task force person besides myself to meet and make these decisions on the fly right now. That's where we are. We're a small congregation. Um, and the other thing is, today, under this and, and some other things that are going on, I froze. I froze. So I'm reading this book called Burnout, and it's about um, unlocking the stress cycle. And normally when we're under stress, we have, you know, you've probably heard of this, the fight or flight syndrome, right? You either, we either we flee the situation, which means we run away, or we fight back to survive. It's just instinctual. But there's also a third thing that we do. And it's uh, the story of a gazelle and a lion. And the gazelle is not fast enough to out run the lion. The lion gets the gazelle in its jaws knocks it down on the ground and the instinctual bodily response is that the gazelle freezes and what does the lion do well she's got hungry cubs so she leaves the gazelle thinking it's dead because it's frozen and 
goes back to her cubs to get her cubs and bring them to the gazelle so they can feed. Now what happens after the lion leaves and the threat is gone, the freeze impulse leaves the body of the gazelle, the gazelle gets up and runs to safety. Under great stress, sometimes we freeze and that's okay too. You may not be in charge of who gathers and who comes together and what they look like when they do it and this person doesn't think it's safe and this person thinks it's ridiculous to not be like this and then ah, you got all these different emotions and feelings and then it's all tied into politics. I don't know how that came in the door but somebody let it in and now it's there. It's enough to make you freeze. Now part two of that is that I told you I was burying signs at the church this morning we have had to block off our parking at the church. You know, people, some people who are members of our congregation have found us by parking at our, in our parking lot, which is free and open to the public, or was, and walking across the street using the beach access in Juneau Beach. Uh, best kept secret, right? Because it's a beautiful part, and there's a shower there. Um, it's wonderful beach access. And in recent months, we've, it's come to our attention through the Juno Beach PD and other residents, uh, homeowners, property owners, people who live in our neighborhood where our church is, that there's a few rotten apples that's spoiling the bunch. And so what the police have reported to us is that folks have been getting intoxicated, possibly in our parking lot. I mean, all the garbage I picked up today was alcohol-related, save for one bottle of water. Uh, and and that they're just going out on that beach and doing everything that they want to do. They've been trespassing, they've been littering, they've been publicly, publicly urinating uh, on private property, on, on people's homes, on residents. And, and, and I know it's not the majority, it's, it's a handful of folks that, that uh, took it too far. But at the end of the day, uh, we, we risk alienating our neighbors as a church and um, we had to rope it off today. And control that situation with the beach park and there's like five spots there that the general public can use to park and um, no more. And, and, I, and I'm sorry for that. I'm, I'm, I'm glad people feel more safe to walk their dogs on our property because there's not a whole bunch of cars and a whole bunch of people that don't know um, all gathered together that we don't know either. And the police said that ultimately because we allow people to park on our, our property we're responsible for what they do when they're here. And if we don't know who you are can't take that li liability on, especially after these uh, infractions, after these uh, trespassing and, and yucky things that folks are doing. So I had to put those signs up, and it breaks my heart because it's against my nature to prohibit people. And um, that's stressing me. There's a, a couple other things going on. But, you know, when I got the letter from the conference, and you know, I've, I've been up since seven this morning, so you know, it taken, how, why does it take me nine hours to figure out what I'm gonna tell my congregation about what's going on on Sunday? It's because I froze, I froze. I, I, I think, the thing is, nine hours. I mean, it used to be you get 24 hours to do anything, right? Not anymore, not in this day and age, you gotta get right on it. And uh, I don't understand that to some degree. I, I, I talk too fast and I, I move quickly sometimes. Um, but you know, I was sick for 11 straight days recently and I, <laughs> life's too short um, to be stressed out about things like this and to actually get to a place where we freeze, you know, on our Sabbath day. <laughs> but I, I just wanna let you know that, yeah, yeah I know the question is still there. Can I wear my mask, do I have to wear my mask at church on Sunday? I, I can't, I guess I can enforce a mask order. I would say, I would only tell you this. Um, we're gonna have to guess, do it by the honor system. If you have been vaccinated and you'd like to come to church and you feel really strongly that you can't wear a mask, um, you're welcome to do that. But if you, if you, if you wanna, even if you are fully vaccinated, which means two solid weeks after your second shot or, or your first shot if you got Johnson, it, it, two solid weeks, if that's the case for you uh, and, uh, and you still feel like you want to lo love your neighbor, make some, somebody else there, there maybe feel more comfortable, you, you're welcome to continue to wear that mask. And I would feel like that would be a symbol of uh, solidarity 
of um, unity, of care for neighbor. And we've always talked about this meaning, love your neighbor, is that's what mask wearing is. Um, so that's kind of where I am with it. I don't, I don't feel like I can really enforce these rules anymore because, I don't know, I don't have the, the task force backing me up for any changes yet. But I'm sure on the 23rd we will have complete guidance for you. We're just... We just don't have a we don't have a way to really have a guidance about it. So it might be a chaotic willy nilly kind of thing on Sunday. I'm hoping that it will be a blessing. I'm hoping that folks will come and be understanding and compassionate and kind. And um, if you're not going to wear a mask, maybe sit way in the back or on the corner or on the side and don't take you know, privilege to go right up front and show everybody or, or right in the middle back where everybody sits. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I hope you'll be understanding and kind and compassionate around this and just, un you know, understand that right now, two days from now, we are, you know, it's less than two days because we worship in the morning and today's the afternoon. We, we don't know quite how to deal with the new ordinances and we, uh, we don't make these decisions unilaterally. I never do and it's not because I'm afraid. It's just because I think it's best that we come together and have consensus about things. Um, but I, I wanted to address you and talk to you a little bit about uh, what that means. So I don't tell you about freezing to, uh, you know, whoa, whoa, it's me. I want to encourage you about dealing with stress because Many of you may be retired and you don't have a lot of things going on. We're in charge of stuff anymore, but there's still stress in your life. There's still things that uh, weigh upon you. Medical diagnosis. There are uh, bills to be paid. There's family members. There's stress with this pandemic. It's tough. I mean, in the beginning, well, do we go to the grocery store or not? I say don't. I do Instacart, but that's just me. I didn't never like going to the grocery store in the beginning. But I, you know, there are a lot of things that are stressing you out. Normal things stress us out because of the pandemic and things we've gone through. So I would encourage you to recognize when you want to flee or fight. Sometimes the anger comes out, right? Or freeze. Freeze is, is, a, is a natural reaction to increased stressors in, in the animal kingdom and in the human kingdom. <laughs> Um, we, we do that. And so I want to encourage you that to just breathe in and out. If you have a loved one near you, to try a 20-second hug. Um, laughter is one of the best things to work your way through stress. And also uh, a conversation with a good friend. Maybe even this video, seeing me pop around my dumb hat and my overalls <laughs> make you... Uh, probably feel embarrassed that your pastor isn't in a in a necktie and a suit sitting in the sanctuary like my colleagues did today. But uh, I don't wear neckties, so <laughs> I just put up signs at the church. Um, I feel like the uh, ultimate killjoy today as the putting up all those signs on the parking lot, killing the vibe on Juno Beach for all those people that love to park in there and enjoying the sun and the sand. Um, but this is something we've had to do. So it just kind of I piled on today with the new CDC things, and I know everybody's wondering about whether or not they have to wear a mask or they should, and um, if anybody else is not wearing a mask, do I want to go, and, and how do I make that decision? And I only just, just beg you to just be compassionate and kind in all areas, whichever side you fall on all this discussion about masking and vaccinating and all that kind of thing. I would just encourage you to be compassionate and kind and also kind to yourself so this is my bigger message um, when we're working through stress and we're going through hard things um, le let me take take my example sometimes you know you get, it, get, it gets piled up it's just things that happen on the same day you can't plan for it. it just does and you freeze and then when the stressor is gone or you work through the stress cycle you can get up and go back to safety and I feel like I've done that um, and I feel good about it. And now I'm able to have this video for you. Um, but I hope that uh, we hope we see you on Sunday. And of course, on the 23rd, things will be just shored up properly, and we'll have a chance to meet and get everything together. But give us a give us some patience this weekend. God bless you.